folks, I'm Ken Ween, and welcome to Let's Talk It Over. With me today, as always, my wonderful friend and co-host, Monica Brinkman. Hi, guys. <laughs> today, I, I, you know, I don't know if Henry's there with you, Monica, but uh, over the years, Monica and I, uh, well, Monica and I, I shouldn't say that, Monica has had a number of cats, and uh, some of them have become very much an integral part of our conversations. And yes. the latest of them is Henry. Come here, Henry. Uh, now will be difficult to get. Let's we'll say hello. Hi, Henry. <laughs> say hi. Hi, Henry. Oh, there he is. Beautiful pussy cat. So, <laughs> Monica and I, you know, we're both animal lovers. I, I'm more dogs. I know Monica also has dogs, but she's a cat lover. And uh, we, my wife and I, have had horses. Uh, I, I don't love think, them. I don't know that you've had any horses, have you? No, but I've ridden them, you know, when I lived in the country, and I, I love them. <laughs> and, of course, one of the things about having pets is that there are these very, very difficult decisions we have to make. Yeah. And I understand one of your other cats, uh, Charlie, Yes. He's not doing very well. No. Oh, and I'll try to get a picture up of Charlie, but um unfortunately my Charlie because it was a she is a shelter kitty, they're susceptible to so many diseases because they just put them all together in a big cage and you know they're crammed in with all these other kitties for until somebody decides they want to adopt them. And we adopted our Charlie, and um, she's been fine, except um, she got really sick about a month ago or so. And we took her to the vet, and I mean, they ran every test they could on her, and what they found out was she has FIP. And Define what that is. Well, there's FIV, which is a virus. Mm -hmm. This is a virus, but it's COVID virus for kitties. Now, people can't catch this. Dogs can't catch it. Other cats can. Mm -hmm. And what's really funny is it's almost as if she knows because she stays away from my this kitty. Mm -hmm. When he tries to get near her, she you know pushes him away. But she's been pretty happy, you know, and fine. But now she's starting to get to the point where it's affecting her total immune system. Her fur won't grow back after, excuse me, they shaved it because they had to do tests right. and such. And she's getting like these horrible ear infections and such. Oh, my. And... My problem is she's, I'm sorry I cry over it, but folks, forgive me, you'll understand. She's a happy kitty, <clears throat> but she's getting sick more and more often, and I'm wondering about the quality of her life right now. I mean, when do you decide that, gosh, should I, yeah. you know, allow her to keep getting sick after sick after sick? And there's only one thing that people say will even work for this, in case people don't know about this FIP, and it's illegal in the United States. And it's an injection, but unfortunately, this injection that they give is acid. It is excruciatingly painful to the cat, and you have to keep giving it to them every single day, sometimes more than once a day. Oh, gosh. For months. Oh, wow. And it do, it doesn't guarantee that they're going to get better, though some do. So and you can kind of force it. hundred dollars each shot. I'm sorry. So I don't know that I could do that to my kitty. Hmm. I you would. Know, if, they, if they had another way of getting that into them with without it hurting them so badly, because I, I don't know if anybody can imagine what it's like to put acid into the veins of an animal, you know, it, it's cruel as far as I'm concerned. But some people do it, you know. But um, yeah, I'd like to hear from other people also. Uh, what, what, what is the point 
when you give up your own selfish love and say, hey, I care more about the kitty or yeah. the doggy or the horse, you know, go whatever. I'd like to hear some of those stories. Maybe people could reach out to us on our Facebook page. Oh, yeah, I would love to share and maybe they'll even like to come on and, and share on, on the podcast. I, could, I wish I could. Uh, come here. I wish I could get her. She's right over there because she's the most beautiful kitty. Most everybody that has seen her just falls. She's beautiful eyes and she talks all the time. <laughs> But um, she's not in pain now and she's had well, I, it's hard to tell with cats. That's the problem because like my punky, you remember punky? Mm -hmm. was. She was so bad and I didn't know it because she never cried. She would purr. She would still eat and went potty and butted heads with me. But she was so much in pain. And in such bad shape that when we finally did say, hey, it's time, you know, to euthanize her, um, they couldn't even find a vein. Oh, wow. And to do it. And I had to watch her last moments being in terrible pain because they had to inject it right into her kidneys. <gasps> oh. Yeah. Oh. And I, I'm warning people about that, too. I, it, cats, it's hard to tell because they they don't let you know they don't cry you know unless they have an ear infection and you're poking in it or something then they'll might cry mm -hmm. but it, it's um yeah it's a topic that animal lovers of all kinds um have input on and experience with and it's like what is the right time when do you do this mm -hmm. <laughs> with any animal when is the right time what right what when is the point that you say the this animal as much as I love it and as much joy as I get in the relationship yeah. that it, it, it's time to let them go? But then, you know, I, of course, I as you know about me, I feel that way about people too. Yeah, I'm I'll, a believer. In no, it. that's interesting. Yes. Yeah. I, um, and I rather agree with you, Kim, because it's our life, our body, our choice. Mm. Yeah. And Unfortunately, why should we subject our own selves to excruciating pain when we don't even do that with our animals? Because we have compassion. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, the animals, I, you know, we don't know what decision they'd make. And, and uh, you know, we cannot, we have to make it for them because... And they they can't speak Although to I, us. I do know that sometimes animals will go off. Just, you know, they'll, they'll try and get out and, and, and go off so that they can die. And, and, you know, there are stories of, of you know, animals doing that. But, but not always, because they love us also. Yes, of course they do. And they don't want, they don't, I mean, they don't want to die. I, I don't imagine, but death is sadly and separation is sadly part of existing you know and the other side of it is if you get an animal like a tortoise or a parrot or i guess even a pot-bellied pig they, they last a very long time and and part of your responsibility is to know how to plan for those animals and i know for example queen elizabeth who of course is quite old, elderly uh, no longer gets any young corgis. Now, she's got a couple dogs, but they, they were like gifted to her. One was, I think, the, the uh, dog of, of a gamekeeper who died or something. And even then, she is trying to plan what, you know, what will happen because she recognizes, hey, I'm an old woman, I'm going to die, and I don't want these dogs just being... Yeah, well, she wants to make sure okay. they're taken care of. Yeah, of course. Absolutely, which is, yeah, it tells her heart. <laughs> that's, well, you know, people would say she has more feeling for the animals than her children, but that's a well, whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> I, anyway, yeah. folks, thank you so much for joining us today. And Monica, uh, you know, I, I want to say something here. You know, you, the, I, I know about you, and, and I don't know if if your 
uh, if the other folks out there, I'm, I'm going to guess they all know it already, but Monica is one of those people who is truly caring, kind, giving. Um, you know, she gives so much more to the world than uh, she asks. And I think that one of the things about her that I, I like a lot many things I like about her is, is that <laughs> quality and it comes across, you know, she believes in karma. She believes that what we do, how we live re is returned to us. And uh, that's why she has two books, two novels that are uh, available on Amazon about karma. And I'd like you to maybe go on Amazon, look for Monica Brinkman and get one of her books because, boy, they're, they're good reads. And Monica, would you add on um, one of your book uh, trailers? Oh, sure. I'd be glad to. Thank you for you caring enough to even ask. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, Monica, you be well. And uh, when you go to feed your cat this evening. My please, Charlie. <laughs> Charlie, please give her a hug from me. And of course, Henry, you are we, well, you, you and I, Henry, we're getting to be buds, right? I know, he just, I'm telling you folks, he was nowhere near here. As soon as we start, you know, to tape our podcast, there mm -hmm. he is. He's mm -hmm. just another diva. If there was a male diva. <laughs> Punky, Punky, of course, used to love to hear my voice. She, she would. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay, folks, and please uh, drop us a line. And we'd love to hear your thoughts on m many of the shows that we've had. You're always welcome to join us. All right, Ken, I'll see you next time. And here Be you well. go.